high grade uh, 12s, I guess. Holy Dinah, I was going to say grade 10s and 11s. Grade 12s, um, second half of the lesson, just as a reminder, the concept itself is very straightforward. The adding and subtracting, multiplying, dividing functions. However, the, the practical application of it means that you have to have all of those other skills of what do I do when I have a radical? What do I do when I have a fraction? So the gist of it is there's no steps that are different. This next piece is just kind of a, a reminder, reach back into what we learned about for what the heck goes on when we have radicals because you have to know that as well. Um, you have to know all of the, those operations, all of those things that you learn in grade 10 and 11 now we're bringing them back to apply them. So just as a reminder, f plus g at x, we know we're just adding our two functions. So I'm going to have my f at x plus my g at x. I've made a little note over here. Just please remember, we also had restrictions. Not only when we had fractions, we also have restrictions when we have radicals because you cannot take the square root of a negative yet. So our radicand, that's the piece underneath the radical sign, needed to be greater than zero. So if we had statements that did not have a particular x value that we're subbing in, we have to state restrictions for those values. Okay, so the first one we have square root of x minus 1 plus we have 3 times the square root of x plus 2. So let's see if you remember how to add and subtract radicals. When you want to add or subtract radicals, they had to be the same kind. So they had to be like terms. You recognize that by having the same radicand, that's the number underneath the radical symbol, and the same index. The index was the tiny little number here. If there was no number, it was just a square root. The number in front is the coefficient. So that's just like if you have three x's, you have three radical of x or three square root x. We can add and subtract like terms the same way. So this would be 1 root x minus 1 and 3 root x plus 2. So my like terms here are my 1 root x and my 3 root x. Remember when we're adding and subtracting, we were only counting. Counting means we are changing strictly the coefficient. So 1 at root x plus 3 root x's is 4 root x's. And then negative 1 plus 2 gives me plus 1. So there is my simplified expression, remembering that x has to be greater than or equal to 0 because it cannot be a negative. Negative. So that's my NPV. Okay, so that's an important piece to include in your answer because it is, it's part of your statement. It's the restricting the function so that it actually exists. Okay. Same idea over here. Just like before, we're going to have our f at x minus our g at x. Don't ask me why I keep putting a bracket down. I'm wanting to write some brackets, which means when I do my next step, I'm going to have brackets there. So we'll have root x minus 1 and then 3 root x plus 2. Keep flip change that second one. First one didn't change. This becomes negative and negative. So Positive 1 root x minus 3 root x gives me negative 2 root x's. Negative 1 and negative 2 is negative 3. Now, again, x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Please recognize I cannot put these two pieces together because those they are not like terms. This has no radical. This is a radical that is uh, um, of the square root of x. They have to match. Okay? Do you remember how to multiply and divide radicals? You were able to multiply and divide radicals as well. Uh, they were a little bit different. There was fewer, sorry, it's probably very loud on you. There were fewer rules this way because they did act just like um, regular binomials. But how we were able to put them together, coefficients times coefficients, radicals times radicals. So the parts on the outside multiplied parts on the inside multiplied. You can multiply a radical times a whole number. You were able to do that. So let me just show you what that meant. So here we had square root of x minus 1 times by 3 square root x. Sorry, I've forgotten what it was. Oh, there's the bell. Plus 2. So there was our expression. We're going to multiply this out. Can the office, please? Sorry. So just as a reminder, we still use the box technique or FOIL, whichever was your preference for those. So root x minus 1, 3 root x plus 2. So this is going to be 3 root x times root x. 
root x times root x would give me 3 root x squared. But I can take the square root of x squared to give me just 3x. Here I'm going to have 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 root x, 2 root x, and then negative 2 here. These two are like terms because their radicand is the same. So this whole thing becomes 3 root x, or sorry, 3x, Mrs. Johnson, 3x, negative 3 and positive 2 is negative 1, and then negative 2 just sits here all by itself. Okay, so there is my expression, remembering that x had to be greater than or equal to 0 as my NPV. Okay, that's our process. Division, again, oftentimes we're not going to be able to do a whole bunch with division unless we have a value to evaluate for, other than stating our restrictions. That's very, very important. So the restrictions on this function. Um, the other piece that we have to watch out for is regardless of where the radicals occur, even if they're on the top, a radical is going to have a restriction on its own. It has to. Radicals on the denominator may be different depending on what they are. Because as a denominator, they have to not equal zero. As a radical, they have to be greater than or equal to zero within the radicand. So there's going to be multiple parts there that you have to watch out for. Um, so this one's going to become uh, root x minus 1 over 3 root x plus 2. Okay, there's my expression. Again, can I simplify anything down? Nope, I'm not able to reduce that radical. Could we rationalize it? Yes, but I'm not going to bother getting into that right now. We'll talk about that when we need to a little bit later on. The restrictions here are still going to be x has to be greater than or equal to 0, right, from this. Now, can my denominator, can my denominator ever equal 0? Well, if I go minus 2, minus 2, is there ever going to be something I can put in for x that's going to make this thing equal negative 2? Well, no, because 3 times, I can't get a negative out of that x because x has to be greater than 0. So this whole piece is essentially unnecessary only in that case. If I'd had something else here, if I'd had a negative or a minus 2, potentially this could have given me a restriction. In this case, it didn't because there's no way to end up with a 0 on that denominator. It's not possible. Okay, so that's a reminder of radicals. We will keep talking about them and bringing them back so that we feel good about them before we really, really need them later on. All right, this one is saying, what if my original statement was a fraction? So how did we add and subtract fractions with polynomial functions? Well, had to get common denominators when we were adding and subtracting. Not very pretty. We don't love them, but it is what it is. We may as well remind ourselves. Just before we begin, begin, remember that we have restrictions based on any denominators. So x plus 1, I know this one's going to have a restriction of x can't equal negative 1. This one over here, x can't equal positive 2. So just as a reminder, those are going to be my restrictions regardless. Okay, so here I've got f at x plus g at x is what's going to happen. So that means I'm going to have x over x plus 1 plus x over x minus 2. Okay, there was a process that we went through to find a lowest common denominator. I'm just going to go ahead and state my NPVs from the top right now, just so that I've got it out of the way, so I know I've done that step. What is the lowest common denominator? Remembering, because they contain an operation, they need to be considered as a whole unless they're able to be factored. My common denominator has to have both of these pieces. So I know my denominator is going to be an x plus 1 and an x minus 2 together. What do I have to multiply this one by? Well, both of them need the x plus 2. We multiply the top and the bottom so that essentially this whole thing is just multiplying by 1. Um, there's no cancelling here. That was when we were solving equations. This is simply um, manipulating operations with functions. So here I'm going to have an x and an x plus 2. Here I would multiply by x, uh, oops, sorry, x minus 2. Mrs. Johnson, I wrote that wrong. Sorry, gang. Oh, I love when I make mistakes. It's so embarrassing. Here I'm going to have an x plus 1. Would Callum Robertson please come to the office? Callum Robertson. Sorry, guys. So x plus 1 and x plus 1. Uh, so I'm going to have an x and an x plus 1 here. 
So what do I do next? Well, I'm going to tidy up what I can by multiplying these in. There's going to be situations where that's all you have, top and bottom. You're going to be able to leave things factored eventually, but for right now, let's keep practicing our expanding out because it is a good skill to refer back to as we keep going. So here I'm going to end up with... Mrs. Fenty, line one, please. Mrs. Fenty, line one. It's lots of phone calls today, or lots of announcements today. So we're going to have x squared, uh, 2x squareds, because there's two of them. Negative 2x and positive 1x is going to give me negative 1x up top. x plus 1, x minus 2. Now, technically we should always check to see if we can factor and cancel anything. I recognize that this is going to be a subtraction, so it's not going to match here. I'm not going to go any farther. Exact same concept, only subtraction means when I've worked out my whole process, so I'm going to have f at x minus g at x, still going to have my same NPVs, x can't equal negative 1 or 2. I'm going to have the same statement, so I'm going to have my x, x minus 2, and my x, x plus 1. I still need that common denominator, but in this case, I wasn't adding the two, I'm going to be subtracting the two. So I'm just cheating and stealing this common denominator, exact same process, okay? So I'm still gonna have x squared minus two x. I'm going to put this in brackets this time. I could have over here as well. So this would be an x squared minus one x. Again, the important thing here is recognizing when I have anything that's going to be subtracted, I'm subtracting the whole thing, not just the first term. That's a really, really crucial skill to be as consistent as you can be so you don't lose, because losing one negative is so frustrating. So here I'm going to have x squared and negative x squared. Those are going to cancel out. Negative 2x and positive 1x. Uh, oops, I've made a mistake here. Negative. Here I had a negative 2. Here I had a positive one. This was a negative, that's my problem. This is going to become a negative. Haha, <laughs> caught it. Negative two x and negative one x gives me negative three x. Sorry guys, you should never look up while you're working. Okay, so I've got my simplified expression, I've got my MPVs, so that piece is done. Okay, good golly gosh. This is the simple concept of this lesson is easy. The practical application of what do you do when you've got weird stuff is the hard part. So hopefully you fast forward what, through what you need to, but it is on you. You need to know how to multiply, divide, add, subtract fractions. You need to know how to deal with radicals. I'm just trying to touch base so I can give you a quick review on it. This one we're going to have... Mrs. Pyre, can you... I swear there's days where we don't have a single announcement happen during the day. But today, <laughs> we have a million. Uh, oops, x minus 2. Okay, so there's our expression being multiplied together. Don't ask me why I just drew a line. I have no idea. So f of x times g of x. Okay, so we're going to get x squared on the top, x plus 1, x minus 2 on the bottom, and we know x can't equal negative 1 or positive 2. Multiplication is always easier than adding and subtracting. Forever and always Multiplication and division is always going to be simpler, which is not the way it started when you were in junior high. I'm putting a big star beside this one, okay, and here's why. You know how to divide using keep, flip, change, but there is another technique that we use when we get into more complicated expressions. So if you have any intention of going on to calculus, if you have any intention to go on into um, engineering, anything that involves higher level math, you're going to want to watch what I do next. If not, keep flip change, do it, move on. So just as a reminder, keep flip change. We would have x over x plus 1 divided by uh, x over x minus 2. That's what we would do. We would turn this into x over x plus 1 times, oops, dot, uh, x minus 2 over x. That's what we would do. We would state our NPVs, uh, so x can't equal negative 1 or positive 2, cancel what we can, and we end up with x minus 2 over x plus 1. That's an answer. That's one way to get there. Again, technically, so if you're not planning on doing higher math, 
fast forward me right now. The next way is using a common denominator. Technically, instead of um, doing a keep flip change or using that inverse concept, the proper method that we always skip over because it's just, it seems like a lot of work. Maybe in the future I'll make kids do it in junior high, but for now I won't. When we write these out, we can write them just like this is written. As we get into higher math, we don't actually do this divide symbol. We do uh, fraction over fraction. So what this would be is x over x plus 1 over x over x minus 2. So there's that big thick line keeping the two pieces separate. The trick is, kind of like I showed you before, uh, when you have that magic number that you can multiply, you multiply by that common number and we're able to cancel things out then. That's what we do here. My lowest common multiple for the two denominators, the x plus 1 and the x minus 2, is, it's both of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply my numerators of each fraction by that. Okay. What's going to happen there is some things are going to cancel out. This x plus 1 cancels with that x plus 1. This x minus 2 cancels with that x minus 2. What I'm left with then is simply x and x minus 2 over x and x plus 1. My fraction over fraction disappeared by getting a common denominator. Those will cancel out. I'm left with x minus 2 and x plus 1. The reason for this is because when we carry on in higher level calculus, that is the process we need to follow. So I'm going to put a star beside that. Um, this is the technique that those of you going on need to practice. Okay? If you're not going on a math, you can just do the keep flip change. It's fine. Okay? Um, our equations that we get into when we're in calculus are so big, we cannot keep flip change. We need a better technique, and that's what it is. Okay. The last piece I want to go through for you is uh, how to do graphs. I'm going to put it into one more video. I'm sorry I'm talking too much.